Reverend Dr. Malachi York, why do you think prayer is not instituted in schools? I think that men today have to realize we have two major forces at war. When people are talking about the Bible, and they're looking at the Bible, especially these preachers today, they kind of forget that this Bible is supposed to be the words of God. They're supposed to be infallible, direct revelations from God to tell humans what is best to do for them. And they've lost sight that one of the things that's taking place, especially in the book of Revelation chapter 12, is a war between evil and what they're calling good. And that those demons in Revelation chapter 12, Satan, that old devil, was cast down out of heaven to earth with his heavenly host. Which means there's a bunch of people called evil angelic beings or people that have an evil spirit in them, an unholy spirit, walking around every day with us on earth. And these people are smart enough to work their way into positions of power that they may rule us, be it from the courthouse or from the colleges or from the hospitals or from parochial school or in kindergarten. Be they bus drivers who intentionally turn over buses with kids on their way to school or pilots who intentionally bring down planes with innocent people. They are offering sacrifices to who they call the devil and think that they are indeed worshiping. These same people are the ones who say do not pray in school. Now most preachers don't want to get bold enough to just call these people Satan's children, but Satan's children in the Bible, in the book of Revelation chapter 12, was cast out of heaven because of a war with Michael, supposed to be one of the highest of all the archangels, the name Mikael means who is like El, or who is like the most high. And they keep referring to El, most all the angels have El on their name. And that ties in with the highest force, the highest law. And this one being called Mikael steps up to say, I dare anybody try to be equal to El, the highest. And if you read on to Isaiah, you read on to different books, you find out that one of the problems with Lucifer, or the so-called devil of this cherub, was he wanted to take the thrones of heaven and be as high as the highest. And Michael went up against him. And that war ensued in heaven that caused them to be cast down to earth. And in Job, when they asked this devil, what is he doing? He made, he made it very clear in Job. Walking to and fro, up and down in the earth. But human beings are not even aware that they're walking and talking with devils every day. Marrying devils. Eating with devils, being served food in restaurants by the devil's children, being taught sermons by devil's children who are shrewd, because it says also in Matthew 24, if it's possible, they'll even fool the elite. They'll be forming signs and wonders. They'll be putting laying on their hands and healing people. They'll be talking about a Holy Ghost and a Holy Spirit. And the church will be bouncing and screaming and sweating. And people will be falling on the ground, foaming out the mouth. And they'll be talking about this is God's work. Things that you won't find written in the law of God. You'll find it in the actions of men. So we're up against two things. The law of man versing the laws of God. And these men are the children of Satan who have set out to make man's law look right and God's law look wrong. These people have worked their way into power while we were praying, while we were following the laws of the Bible and working the land. Like God said, man should work by the sweat of his brow. That's what Genesis said about us. Mm -hmm. While we were obeying the laws of God, these people were setting up institutions of education mm -hmm. and putting themselves up as the authorities over human beings and making laws to rule you and setting up their own courts and their own system of justice and, say, and going against everything that God said and made it and made you look wrong if you do not obey them and will even imprison you. Go ahead. That's who did it. Yes, go ahead, sister. Reverend Dr. Malachi York, is this country based on religion or is it based on the strategy of money and finances? This country was supposed to be originally founded by religious pilgrims. 
who supposedly came here with a Bible in their hand, the original Freemasons. But slowly and surely, this, they were undermined, and it turned into, just like you said, who has the most money? And whoever has money, like OJ got a lot of money, so he got away with a murder, apparently. If that was somebody without that much money, they would have got the death penalty. Now you're mad because the system that you set up to only work for you works for OJ. So now you're upset. So you set out to kill and beat up a bunch of black kids and rage. And we have a whole rash of black people getting shot down, killed by white cops, murdered for no apparent reason, it seems like. But it all happened right after. OJ, that's another form of revenge, so I go, where the system backfires on you. You know what I'm trying to say? Because you based it on money. But you never intended for other races of people here to get their hands on that money. But now you have to deal with people like the Nation of Islam, who messed around and figured out a way to make some money and still maintain their own philosophy or their own beliefs. Or the Yahweh Ben Yahweh's. So you have to come after Yahweh ben Yahweh because he's not following the laws of man. He's living by the laws that you can follow. Everything he did is in the Bible. Even if you said he killed that person. Or he did this or he did that. He, is he following the Bible? If he's crazy enough to believe he's following the Bible to do it. And then the system steps in. Why? Because Yahweh ben Yahweh was controlling millions of dollars. And in controlling millions of dollars, he was going to be controlling millions of votes. So they had to send him into a crazy man, call him a killer, and get him out of here. But if, but if he was Shula, if he was Billy Graham, if he was Jimmy Swagger, they get him back out of jail quick and back on the streets. If he's Jim Baker, they get him out of jail quick and back on the Because they got a host of ethnics sitting up there whose minds they're controlling. Whose pockets they're emptying. Yeah, and whose future they have none. You follow what I'm saying? So yes, this country was intentionally or initially to be ran by religious people. That's the principle that said it was founded on. But when they first found out that the Native Americans who were Negroes here, they're not the American Indians who came over here, but the original Negroes who were here, the indigenous people, the Native Americans, when they found out they had gold, they had what you have, was, have the gold rush. And the whole principle changed. They came, they came over here to so-called help the natives. And then they started helping, them, helping themselves to all the wealth that the natives had. By using religion. Man, they used religion. That cross can be turned upside down and become a sword. Mm -hmm. All right, go ahead. Yes, sister. Why, was, why has God seemed to have turned his back on us? Is it because we're turning to these to the fallen angels for guidance? Okay. That sounds like a question and a statement. It, 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 you follow? It didn't sound just like a question. It sounded like you were telling me something there. Yeah. Are you telling me you feel that God turned this back on you because you seem to have surrendered to these fallen angels? Is that what you're saying? Or are you asking me, is that the reason? I'm asking, is that the reason? I'll, okay, and I'll take you to the Bible. And I'm going to show you how they play tricks with the Bible to make their point. Yes. Right? We're talking about 2 Samuels, right? Yes. Shield. My Mogan, right? My shield. And the horn of my salvation. That's right, the point of my salvation. My high tower. My highest tower. See, that, that L is in there. Go ahead. And my refuge. My refuge. My savior. My savior. That's going to be Mashiach, the word Messiah is going to be found right there in the Old Testament. The same, the same word they're using for Jesus, Messiah, is right there. You follow? Okay, they use, I'm sorry, they use the little word, the portion of it, Yeshua, which the, with the Ma on it, it becomes one who is a Yeshua or a Messiah in Hebrew, a Savior. It's right there, certain points. Go ahead. Thou savest me from violence. Thou savest me from violence. Now, let's take a portion of that quote, the first part of it, and read it again. The what? The God. And the word there is Elohim. It's a plural, which I've said a million times. Mm -hmm. It's a, a, a host of beings. Mm -hmm. But that's not what I'm going to that's, that's One of them is called El. 
So uh, Elohim, it says, what the God of my rock, that's my strength, what, what holds me together. Mm. What about? In him will I trust. Now let's go back to the courthouse. You hear me? Mm -hmm. yes. In God we trust. Right. Or in God we should put our trust. Mm. Because God is my rock. Right. Right? right? Now in him I will trust. I will have refuge. I will be safe. And that's not only on the walls of the corrupted courts where they don't put their trust in God because they condemn people to death. Right. Mm, that's right, and that's God right. says, vengeance is mine, says the Lord. Right. Right. The commandment thou shalt not kill is to be judged by God, not by men. So if a man kills a man who kills somebody, then he too is going to be judged by God. He can call, my job is, I'm an executioner for the state. No, you are a killer for Satan. Because right. mm -hmm. right. you are going against the commandments. There's no court system. There's no educational system. There's no system in, on the planet that goes higher than El, which is God's name. The highest. Elion, Elion El. So when some man decides that we're going to put David, question them to death, because we said he had guns that you made and he won't let us have them back. So you massacre David Koresh and a bunch of babies. Mm -hmm. You're going to hell. That's right. You are going to hell. You are, at, you are advocating the devil's doctrine where you separate the law from man and the law of God. Is this a religious country living by the law of God? Then the Bible becomes your constitution. If this is not a religious country and you don't live by the law of God, then you have a man-made constitution of which you're living by. And you look in the Bible, you can find, let's look at Romans 12, 19. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Who's talking? Who's talking? The law, right? Right. Mm -hmm. And what is the Lord saying? Vengeance is his. Say it again. Vengeance is. What is vengeance? What is vengeance? Huh? Revenge. Justice. Right. If you do something to God's creatures, God says, vengeance is mine, not yours. You understand? People say, well, what do we do with people that kill people? We go by what God said if we say we live by the law of God. If not, then we live by the law of man and stop pretending we're Christians. Stop pretending you're good people. Stop pretending. Don't be sitting up there in a the courthouse, a lawyer, pretending you're a good person. Or a judge pretending you're a good person. Or a cop pretending you're... And they said, how can you be a law enforcement agency? Use the word law out the Bible. Put it in a dictionary. And then reuse it the way you want. And then say, I'm a sheriff or I'm a police officer, or I'm a detective, or I'm an FBI agent, or I'm a this and I'm a that. And you take a word out of the Bible, the law, because the very word Torah, Arah, means the law. And when you go back to the book of St. John, chapter 1, it says what? The law came from Moses, or by Moses. Right? right. But grace and truth by way of whom? St. John's chapter 1, verse 17. Right? right? For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Right? right. The law. Who the law came by? Jesus Christ. No, by Moses. God gave Moses the law. God didn't give man on earth a new system of law. The law that God gave man, right? right? Jesus came with grace, which is forgiveness. Mm -hmm. You see that? Mm -hmm. But now we're living in a society where they justify putting people to death. Where they're telling us we're living by God's law. Because they have there, in God we trust. And then they violate Exodus chapter 20 verse 13. When it says, thou shalt not kill. 
and they justify killing. They justify killing a killer. Mm -hmm. If a man has pit bulls or raises tigers even, and this animal who they feed meat, they know he's a carnivorous, flesh-eating creature. If he one day works according to his nature as an animal, the way God made the lion and turns on his master and kills his master, they say, we put him to sleep. They don't want to say we put him to death. A lion will attack a man. If you raise lions, you take the chance of being attacked by a lion. Who gave the lion his nature? God. And that's the law of God. The law of God is that a man can't be the lion. That's right. Men are killers also. Mm -hmm. So God, and how do you know he killers? Oh, because chicken. Actually, chicken is men killers. Right. <laughs> but they kill things. Made some things for food. Some men go out and hunt for the pleasure of it. Every time a hunter picks up a rifle and shoots down an animal, they violate Exodus 20, 13. Mm -hmm. Every time a man pulls a switch, like I said earlier, on a murderer who's mentally insane, he is guilty of Exodus chapter 20, verse 13. Mm -hmm. He is a killer and is going against God's commandments mm -hmm. because God gave the law to Moses. Did not give it to any federal courts, any jurisdiction courts. Gave it to the law of Moses. But man don't want to live by God's law. Because man can't be in control. You see, what man can't be in control? Hmm? The children of Satan. Who are walking amongst us. They're not walking around with horns. They're not white men. Versus black men. They're all kind of people. They're his children. They look just like us. They're walking amongst us. And they interfere with God's law. See, they're real smooth. They justify it. You know what I'm saying? That's why they have what's called justifying homicide. You know what I'm saying? Or right. self-defense homicide. Right. Right. They even weave these little tri tricky words in. What is justification? Uh, let's take a justification in the law. One of them is, they jumped on Reverend Jesse Jackson. And said uh, he had uh, extra what? Extra marital affair. What the heck does that mean in the Bible? No, don't tell me what it means in the state of Georgia. Right. Don't tell me what it means in New York City. Don't tell me what it means in Texas. Tell me what does that mean in the Bible. When Jesus was confronted, pertaining to the Lord, and they asked him about Caesar, you know what he said? Render unto Caesar what is Caesar's, and unto the Lord what is the Lord's. Let those people who follow Caesar, follow Caesar. And those people who follow God, follow God. They're two different type of people. And Caesar was a devil. Mm -hmm. A killer of people. A wicked, vicious man. He was a devil's child. But Jesus was the son of God. And Jesus made that decision that this statesman, this governor, who ruled this big empire, this powerful empire called Rome, should be separated from God. And when I asked him again, he said, listen, no man can serve two masters. Mm -hmm. Rather, he loves one and hates the other. Exactly. So don't tell us that you can serve God, God's law, and then walk in a courtroom and they trick you by putting in God we trust to justify violating God's law mm. to the devil mm. and living in a devil system. Unless you want us to worship two gods. You want us to worship your law and the law of the Bible. Because you created laws saying a man should have one wife his whole life. You said that. That's not the law of Moses. That's not the law of God. Mm. I'll tell you why. Because if we turn to Genesis chapter 4 verse 19, we're going to find a man called Lamech. Right? He's from the land of Nod. Supposed to be a city of wicked people. He had two wives, Adam and Zillah. Right? right? That's right. All right. Now, he's a wicked man with two wives. See? That's against the law of God. No. Now, let's go to another man. Let's go to Abraham, the father of many nations. The one God talked to. 
You know, when one God said, go on down to the land of Egypt. God, the one whose name is repeated off time through the Bible as God's man. Right. Abraham. Give me that old time religion. It's good enough for Abraham. It's good enough for me. You. You've been singing all these years in the church. Is that right? That's right. Alright, now let's see what the Bible says about Abraham. Did Abraham have one wife like your system created it? Or did he live by the law of the scripture? Let's see what it says here. Genesis chapter 17 verse 15. Anybody got it? Yes. What does it mean? And Sarai, Abraham's wife, mm -hmm. took Hagar, her maid, the mm -hmm. Egyptian. And? After Abraham had dwelt ten years mm -hmm. in the land of Canaan mm -hmm. and gave her to her husband, Abram, mm -hmm. to be his wife. So, the Bible says, Sarah, Abraham's wife, mm -hmm. took Hagar, her maiden, and gave her to Abraham to be his wife. According to the Bible right there, how many wives did Abraham have? Two. Two. And Abraham was a man of God after that. Mm -hmm. That's right. No system right. stepped in and told Abraham he's a bigamist. That's right. The Romans couldn't tell him what to do. The Babylonians couldn't tell him. The Chaldeans couldn't tell him what he's doing. Because Abraham, according to you and according to the Bible, was God's man. The founder of monotheistic religion. The father of all Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Abraham, Ibrahim, Abraham. Right. Not only there, let's go down. Let's look at Genesis chapter 16, verse 3, about this same brother Abraham. Right. And Sarah, Abram's wife, took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian, after Abram had dwelt ten years in the land of Canaan, mm -hmm. and gave her to her husband, Abram, to be his wife. So, a woman here, a woman of God, Sarah. We all know Sarah is in the Bible, in the Christian yeah. world. Sarah gave another woman to Abraham to be his wife. But it doesn't stop there. Go on further. Look at Genesis chapter 25 verse 1. Go ahead. Then again Abraham took a wife and her name was Ketorah. Then again Abraham took a wife. And her name was Ketorah. Now Abraham, the father of many nations, the chosen of God had three wives. One, the second, Hagar, was given to him by his wife, but according to this one, he chose the third one himself. Right. Now, that's in the Bible as the law of God. And nowhere does it ever come in there and call Abraham a bigamist, or say God is mad at him, or God is angry with him, or that he had violated any law. That's the Bible. What law is telling you you're supposed to have one wife? And if you don't have one wife, you're a bigamist and you can go to jail. Whose law is that? That's not the law of God. That's the law of man. And those men are going against the law of God and got you thinking it's the right thing to do. But I ain't finished. Abraham had a son. Right? His name was Isaac. And Isaac had a wife. And her name was Rebecca. So Isaac had one wife. So can a man have one wife? Yes. Yes. I'm not saying he shouldn't have one wife. If he chooses to have one wife, he can have one wife. Isaac did. Though she betrayed him at the end of his life, when his eyes were dim, he did have one wife. That's his choice. But to tell a person they can't have two or three is going against God's law. Because God didn't say that. Let's look again. Let's look at Jacob. How many wives did Jacob have? He had Rachel. He had Leah. He had Bilhah. And he had Zilpha. This is in the Bible. He had four wives and bore 12 sons, the 12 tribes of Israel, and one daughter Dinah. From them, four wives. Am I lying? Or is that the Bible? Yes. So God chose Jacob. Spoke to Jacob. Changed Jacob's name to what? 
is real, which means strong with God, strong with El, Israel. Right? Right. After he had four wives, God came and gave him a new name. So God, he was still in the eyes, in the sight of God and faith. That's right. Told him where to go to avoid Esau, his twin brother, who also was a polygamist. See, understand? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So according to the Bible here, in St. John's again, chapter 1, verse 17, God tells us the law came through Moses. And that law we're talking about is the Tanakh or the Torah, the Old Testament that we're reading. And as I quote from this Old Testament, it seems to have a different story about women and men than we're being made to believe or being forced to obey. Mm. We're being forced to obey man's laws. I am not advocating go out and have a bunch of wives. I am saying you make the decision between one or at least, let's see, at least so. I was looking around here and stumbling across this and I found someone in here. I think it's in 1 Kings chapter 11 verse 13 who had 700 wives. Whoa. His name is Solomon. We who travel acknowledge Solomon, oh great Solomon, our king. Son of David. When you look in the Bible, 1 Kings chapter 11, verse 13, and 1 Kings chapter 11, verse 14, what do you come up with? Somebody read. And he had 700 wives, princes, and 300 concubines, and his wives turned away his heart. Who, who are we talking about now? Solomon. How do we know? Because verse 4 is going to say what? For it came to pass when Solomon was old that his wives turned away his heart. And after that, other gods and his heart was not perfect with the Lord, his God, as was the heart of David and Solomon. How many wives does Solomon have? Now, some of them wives turned his heart away, right? And you may use that as an excuse, but Rebecca did the same thing with, as one wife. So they ain't got to do with that. The point is. Solomon is the great King Solomon. Whole books are talking about his greatness and his wisdom and his knowledge and all that. And he had 700 wives. And was he as the king and books are named after him. Songs of Solomon. Was he in the light of God? Was he in God's sight a good man? Oh, in his later age it says... He turned bad. So if he turned bad in his later age, he must have been good when he was young. That's right. Mm -hmm. And That's he had right. been 700 women when he was young, not when he was an old man. That's we know right. that. That's right. I ain't got to explain why either. No, not at all. <laughs> David had two wives. You find that in 1 Samuel chapter 27 verse 3. Correct? And then in 1 Chronicles chapter 14 verse 3, he adds on more wives. Rehoban. Look at this one. Rehoban, that's um, there, Solomon's son, thank you, there. Second Chronicles 11, 21, 18 wives. My goodness. 18 wives. You got it? Somebody read it. I'm, I'm, I'll just run the quotes off. There's um, Second Chronicles 11, 21, Second Chronicles 13, 21. Correct? Read it. And Rehoboam loved Micaiah, the daughter of Absalom, above all his wives and his concubines. For he took eighteen wives and threescore concubines, and begat twenty and eight sons and threescore daughters. Whose law was he following? God's law. I know women don't like that. Mm -hmm. I would either follow one. <laughs> but it just happens to be the law of God. Now, whose laws are we following? God's laws. How many other things are we doing, walking around daily, thinking that we're obeying God, when in fact we are obeying Satan? I got a solution for prayer in school. What is it? <laughs> I got a solution for prayer in school. They don't want prayer in school, because that's where the session opened up, right? They don't want prayer in school. Here's what we're going to do. I want every Christian, every Christian is listening to me right now. I want you to get a dollar bill okay. and make sure it's a nice dollar bill and it has on the back of it and God we trust. 
I want them to take that dollar bill and give each kid a dollar bill and tell them, don't break that dollar bill until they get to school. Eh? Okay. And when they get in class, right before the bell rings, all the kids at the same time say, excuse me, teacher. With all due respect, could we read something to you before we start class? Because this is an institution of learning. Okay. And reading is one of the things we came here to do. So can we read something to you? And of course the teacher has to say yes. Right. I want you to kid, each kid, tell the kid at that moment, reach down in that pocket and pull out that dollar bill and flip it out and hold it backwards and then look at the teacher all together and say, we're reading now, in God we trust. Fold the dollar up and put it back in your pocket and sit down. That is cool. <laughs> and tell me, did they violate the law? They didn't. No, not at all. So then we got prayer back in school in one day if everybody would just take that test. No teacher can say that you cannot tell me I can't read what's on the back of the dollar bill printed by the United States government. Just like you can't tell me when I walk in the court and I'm meeting God we trust that the court is not opening in prayer. The question comes back again. To whom are they praying to in the court systems when they're violating the laws of God? And it makes, it, it makes it look like what I'm saying is bad. I'm a bad man now. Oh man, that man is telling people to go out and have wives and fornicate. You can say that. You can say that man. You can pretend I'm not quoting the Bible. You can pretend I didn't give you the names of prophets and kings of God. You can pretend that didn't happen. That makes you feel good. But you know what? You'll be confessing that you're also a child of Satan. Mm -hmm. Because you are chosen the laws of man over the laws of God. They has a quote that said, they put aside the laws of God for the, for the traditions of men. You can find it. Go ahead. Would you want to ask me a question? Okay. Um, I grew up in the Baptist church, mm -hmm. and all this is new to me. Mm -hmm. But from what I'm seeing, Muslims are having a hard time with the different wives, but mm -hmm. the Mormons seem to live happily. Mm -hmm. What is the difference? Okay, that's a very good question. And being neither, being, we're not Mormons, <laughs> it's hard to really get into it without get, we're getting into their bedroom. But the bottom line is, I don't think Mormons are any happier than Muslims, and I don't think Muslims are any, uh, any less happy. I do think probably the restrictions of face veils in the 21st century that Muslims are required to wear, called a khimar, the purdah, the hijab, the restrictions that you can't drive, and a whole bunch of other religious rituals like you got to get in the back of the mosque in prayer. I think some of the laws that are also not in the Quran, but created by men. I'm not talking about the veil. The veil is in the Quran. But a lot of traditions that Muslim women are subject to, a person who was a Muslim at one time, I'm talking from a person who was a Muslim myself, the, the laws I saw, it made women's lives miserable. But those were not the laws of Allah in their Quran. Those are the laws of men too. They're having the same problem where men, learned scholars have come in and they've imposed all these customs called sunnah and traditions called hadith or vice versa. And they got women as in some type of mental slavery. You know what I'm saying? But I don't think the Mormon women or the uh, Amish, Amish. The Amish women or, or, you know, who are all polygamous, I don't think they're any uh, happier or unhappy than some woman who's just a regular Baptist who has some husband who's a drunkard. Or some preacher who's a hypocrite cursing every day, acting a day going fool. Right. right? I don't think there's any I don't think there's any difference. I think the system makes laws that makes you think you're doing better. Because you're following their system. And you're conforming to the laws of Satan. And you're you're not complying with the laws of God because they make the laws of God look like they're evil. You find that quote? It's in Colossians chapter two, verse eight. Beware. Least any man spoil you. Hello? Talk to me. <laughs> Beware. Least any man spoil you. Right? Okay, what does it say? Through philosophy and vain deceit. Through philosophy. This ain't law. This is philosophy. Philosophic, he found you. You know what I'm saying? And vain deceit after the what? Tradition of men. Go ahead. After the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. After the rudiments of this world and not 
of Christ. That's another book. You'll find it too. You hear that? Somebody got it? You hear what happened? The Bible warns you against listening to men with philosophical ideas without facts, without biblical law. And these men are the ones making it and put together law books. And we feel that because Mr. So-and-so did such and such, he should be in prison for such and such and such. And we feel, what do you feel, jury? Well, we, the jury, feel, but we can't, all this is philosophical stuff, and that's in, what's that, Colossians what? 2 8. Let me look at it again. You found the other one for me, dear? In what? Look, oh, while you look for Colossians 2 8, let's read Mark 7 8. All right? For laying aside the commandments of God, ye hold the traditions of men. Read it. As the washing of pots and cups and many other such like things you do. Read that first line though. For laying aside the commandment of God. You laid aside Exodus chapter 20 verse 13. You laid it aside. You ignored it. You pushed it out the way. Thou shalt not kill. It did not give you a commentary. It did not give you an explanation. It literally said that God said to Moses, to whom the law was given, Thou shalt not kill. So you're not justified in killing. You're not justified in the death penalty. You're not justified in birth control. And they tell you right there in the Bible. Read that one again, Mark. For laying aside the commandment of God, you hold the tradition of men. You lay aside the commandments of God, and you hold the traditions of men. Men are making the laws over our lives. God made let Solomon have seven hundred wives, and Rehoboam have eighteen wives, and Abraham have four wives, and and um, <laughs> and Jacob. Have um, for, Jacob have, I'm sorry, Jacob have four wives, Isaac had one wife. God let them do that. Lamech have two wives. God let them do that in his book, in his law. But you are now saying it's wrong. So you can jump on Jesse. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if Jesse is a religious man, then Jesse is living by the law of God. That's right, He's following the Bible. Exactly. You don't want him to live by the law of God. You, live, you want him to live by the traditions of man, Mark. Chapter 7, verse 8. Anybody in Colossians? Let's go over Colossians again. Those are 2 8. Yes. Beware lest any man spoil you through. Come on. Let, 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 let the world hear God's word. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. After the traditions and rudiments of the world, and not after Christ? Now read Mark again. What is the Bible warning you against? Man's law. Man's law. What man? Is the devil ever called a man? How is he disguised? As a man. As a He's man. coming as a man. How are we to be, how are we to know? How are we to fight? The Bible warns us in Revelations chapter 13 about him. If we look at Revelations chapter 13, I'm going to go right there, right where you can see it. Okay. Let's go there to the end of it. Let's see what the devil looks like. Revelation chapter 13 verse 17. Read it. And no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. His name. His name. His name. This beast is the devil. Right? Right. That's right. Well let's read on and see what Revelations. Now this was interesting. I want you to catch this. Revelation chapter 13 verse what? 17. Now we're going into verse 18. The last verse of Revelation is 18. And 18 is three times what? Six. Three times six is 18. And watch what we read. Here is wisdom. wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast. Three times six. 18. All right? Go ahead. I want this part read now because this is most important. Go ahead. For it is the number of a man. Stop again. The beast. The devil. 
is a what? Number of a man. It's a man. That's right. He's a man. He's not a creature. He's not a goggle. He's not something with horns. Something we would recognize as some monster that they constantly put in movies to confuse us. To make us think the devil got this certain, oh, he's red and got horns and a tail and a pitchfork and all that old crap. Like they did at End of Days. Right. right. And all these other movies, that's done by devils to make you so you don't realize all the actors in the movies were devils. Wow. Right. Right. It tells you right in the Bible, Revelation chapter 13, verse 18. Who are they? Men. Men. What is the devil? A man. Listen. Listen again. Now, you lay aside the commandments of God for the traditions of men. 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 Is the devil a man? Yes. yes. If you put aside the commandments of God, you're on the outside of God, and anything on the outside of God is on the inside of the devil. Mm. So now we're living in a system. That's telling us to do things other than the Bible and making them look right and making Jesse look wrong. Mm. Right. That's right. Mm. Make him look evil. We can't even see this trick of the devil. We're so busy looking for other things. Right. We're looking at little boys getting shot down in drive-bys. Right. You know what I mean? We're looking at um, drug addicts and they focus this and the reverends and preachers are focusing our attention in the wrong direction and we're missing the devil. The devil's right up on our nose. The devil is teaching our kids in school. That's why they don't want prayer in there. Because they want to teach them a bunch of lies about the greatness of men. That's right. right. Tell us about it. How come the city don't sponsor religious schools if this is a religious country? And make the Bible and the commandments of God the law that man lives by. You know why? Because they have to open the door of the courts. On other principles. They won't be able to say, well, that man has four wives, he's a bigamist. Because he'll go, well, according to the Bible. Mm -hmm. Say, well, we're going to put this guy to death because he killed somebody. I said, well, according to the Bible, you can't do that. Now, the Exodus tells you you can't do that. That's right, that's right. That's what it's you can't tell that man he can't have more than one wife. He can have, his, he can have up to how many? Seven. The most I've seen mentioned yet. It was 700. 700. <laughs> so a man can have up to 700 wives according to this. To that. How many children is allowed to have? Mm. It's 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 it don't say. That's right. You see what I'm saying? But they'll turn around and they'll take this whole tape and make it look like it's something evil because I'm quoting the Bible. They know by now, if I was to take this, I can go to Hebrew. So don't say, well, he just, don't start to go to like Hebrew or that Greek because I'll go to Hebrew or the Greek and still come out to say the same thing. Probably with more Enforcement. All right, That's right. the day and time. Would you find that quote I was looking for? All right, another one. We're looking at um, Daniel's nine twenty-one. Where are you, dear? Ezekiel, right? Let's stay there first. And let's look at Ezekiel chapter ten, verse eight. And there appeared in the cherubim, right, the form of. That's right. So the cherubim. Had man's hands. Mm. If you have man's hands, then you a man. If you have monkey's hands, you a monkey. <laughs> so he had wings, but he had the hands of man. Let's see what Daniel's 9.21 says. I'm going to come back to Revelation so I ain't going to fall. What does it say? Here it tells you that this angel, Gabriel, a good angel, Gabriel or Gibrael means sent from El, mm -hmm. is a man. Mm -hmm. He came down as a man. Right. So now, when I go back to Revelations uh, chapter 12 and start talking about the battle between uh, Michael and, uh, and what? Michael and, and his angels, angels was fighting against who? The dragon. The dragon. Who else is he called? Satan. Satan. They call him all those names. Lucifer. Mm -hmm. So if Gabriel, who's Michael's right hand man, comes as a man, 
Can the devil come as a man? That's right. That's Is right. the devil That's a right. man? Yes. yes. You got to get that taught in the churches. Mm -hmm. Because right. as you're walking down the street, you're walking past devils who know they're devils. Mm -hmm. And you don't know it. As a child of God, you can't tell who they are, but they know who you are. Mm. And that's why they set out against people like the Nuwapians. Mm. That's why they're planning to make you, and the media, they got people in the media working for them, like Rob Peter, mm. and Bill Osinski. Right. Tell us about Little it. devils that work for the devil, and they're like, go after those Nuwapians because they're devils. Mm. What do they do? I heard they violate the law. What law? God's law or man's law. That's right, that's right. I read in the Bible where it said Abraham went to a certain spot, looked at it, decided this is a place for God, and there he built an altar. Tell us about it. He didn't go get no uh, plans. <laughs> he didn't go to the board of commissioners. <laughs> he didn't call out a building his <laughs> To come out of Jerusalem and walk around the altar of God and say, uh, all right, come before a bunch of us folks in a little town hall and we'll tell you, you can build an altar to God. Right. Wow. <laughs> but if I want to build a church to God, an altar to God, right. like Abraham, like Isaac, like Abraham, like Psalm, like Elijah, yeah. if I want to build an altar to God, you're telling me I got to go before a bunch of people who may not even be Christians. <laughs> Right. And they can tell me, no, I don't think we want you to build that church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, we don't want you to build that temple or that pyramid or any other monument. We don't want you to build that. Right. Right. Abraham didn't ask permission. So now let me see. Are the Nuwapians living by the law of God or by the law of men? I say the law of God. Well, I mean, they're saying the Nuwapians just go out and build. <laughs> Abraham just went out and built. So were you, was Abraham in violation of some codes? No. Of course he was according to the building and zoning board. Right. <laughs> and then I know there's a church in Athens. Right on Broad Street. They closed it down. Closed down the church. Mm -hmm. A church? That's right. A house of God. They closed it down. They said because it was not properly zoned. Oh. Mm -hmm. They have a rabbi. Right up here in Georgia, up there in Atlanta, and he has I rented a house. And he has his services in his house, and they came in and told him, no, you can't have services in your house. Can't worship you can't God. worship God in your house. Because mm. oh. uh, it's not zoned for that by the laws of men. Man. <laughs> the laws of the traditions of men. The customs of men. You with me? Yes. And who is that man again? The devil. the devil. You know most Christians are worshiping the devil and don't know it. Mm. Yeah. Following his laws and don't know it. Mm. And don't even have the courage to stand up on behalf of God and his son Christ. And just say I follow Christ. The son of God because he is the way, the truth, and the light. And no one is going to get to the father but by him. I ain't following you. Okay. But when you do that like Reverend Malachi said, Yo, boy, you a tyrant. Mm. You a monster. Tell me another law that in the Wapians uh, violated. They make a lot of noise out there, Seal said. You mean like uh, the walls of Jericho? <laughs> you mean like yelling and singing praise and rejoicing and being exceedingly glad because great is your reward? Never. You mean that kind of noise? Mm. Screaming and jumping up and down? Quiet singing. And, and quiet singing and that kind of noise? That's the violation of the law? Mm -hmm. I heard them guys out there allowed to have more than one wife. Mm. Is that the violation of your law or God's law? If Abraham was here, and I had to ask Abraham, let's say, okay. now be with me, mm -hmm. let's say we had a choice between four judges. Okay. One of the judges is Moses, mm -hmm. one of the judges is Abraham, mm -hmm. okay. one of the judges were Hoban, mm -hmm. and the other judges, Solomon. I have them or four people you pick from your town who might even not even have a high school diploma, let alone know the Bible or be close to God, and they can make the decision on how many wives a person should have. Who should I go to, y'all? Who should I go to, audience? Should I go to Solomon and Rehoboth and should I, or Jacob? And should, or, you know what I'm saying? Or should I go to the four people there who have a one wife miserable system making men go around and cheat? Solomon. Got all these, why do you think you have all these juke joints with all these, with we bear all? Why do you think men are sneaking around in brothels chasing women? 
and having, why do you think that all these politicians are getting caught with all this extracurricular activity? <laughs> because the human animal don't have it in his nature to have one woman. Just like most other animals. But men know that. These demon men, those Satan men, those children of Satan in Revelation 13, they know that. They know they can make you violate the law by restricting you from being yourself. Right. Most of the black men, Latino men, came from Africa less than 400 years ago. Okay. In every country you go into Africa, whether it is the Islamic religion or the Yoruba religion or they're just customs, you don't find no man with no one wife. Teachers. But they bring you here, kidnap you, bring you to the country and try to make you live their laws. Mm -hmm. right. And if you don't live their laws, they're ready to put you in their jails. That's right. And if you kill somebody for trying to put you in their jail, they want to kill you. Total violation of all God's laws and an open confession is dealing with the devil in disguise. It tells you right here in the Bible. Yes, I'm going to read it one more time because it's very important. Revelation chapter 13, verse 12. Here in his wisdom let him that hath an understanding count the number of the beasts. For it is the number of a man. Mm -hmm. He said anybody with wisdom and understanding, they're going on later for the knowledge. Wisdom <laughs> and understanding, they're going to see that the devil is a man. Right? Okay. Let me tell you. Why, why did I jump on 18? Huh? Why did I jump on 18 so important? You know why? Let me ask you. According to this country and the laws of man, when are you a woman? What age? 13. 13. 18. At this country? 18. 18. 18. You're 18, you're a woman, and at 21, you're a man. Mm. Got that? Gotcha. Wow. 18, 3 times 6. Mm. That's right. Now, according to the Bible, mm. according to the law, bar mitzvah and bat mitzvah, according to the Bible and the law, how old is a man? When he, when he, how old is a child when he becomes a man? Thirteen. Thirteen. Got me? And a woman and a bat mitzvah? Thirteen. We're looking at Revelations chapter 13, the law of God. Eighteenth verse about the devil man. Mm -hmm. They make you violate the law. They tell you you're not a woman until you are eighteen and nature tells you you're a woman at 13. And some younger, but the law, according to Judaic and biblical teachings, that Moses and Jesus and Abraham and all of them followed was a bar mitzvah and a bat mitzvah. Isn't that strange that it's Revelation chapter 13? Mm -hmm. right. And that's when you're really a daughter according to God. Mm -hmm. and, has, and the 18th one tells you it's a man. Mm -hmm. That's the devil. Mm -hmm. And the laws you're living by mm -hmm. are the laws of men. That you laid aside God's law for the traditions of man. If you want to ask me a question, go ahead. Why, why is man's law so tempting to go against God's law? Why do you think that, that we keep running to um, man's law when God already has a book laid out of what the laws are and should be? Why do you think we keep running, or why do you think we keep running to man's law? Well, all we got to do is go back to one of my favorite quotes, Genesis chapter 3, mm -hmm. and see what happens. Okay. I use this quote so much it's amazing. Right? Uh, the second chapter of Genesis, the 25th verse, which starts right before the 20, the last verse. What does it read? Anybody there? And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. They were not ashamed. The last thing God says in Genesis chapter 2, verse 25, is both man and woman were naked, but there was no shame yet. They didn't look at it as nudity. They didn't look at it as lust. Okay. They had no shame. Now let's stay. Now let's see what happens next. Uh, Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God has made. Go ahead. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Stop. Let's look at this devil as if he's a bad person, okay? Okay. Okay. And he is trying to make this woman violate God's law. Mm. Look at it again. Okay. 
He's trying to make her put God's law aside. Go ahead. And the woman said, No, I want that. Yay. I want the devil. The devil speaks out. Yay. Have God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Did God give you a commandment? Did yes. God tell you something, woman? Now watch what the devil does. Number two, go ahead. Now you can continue. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. Mm -hmm. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, mm -hmm. God had said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it. So God had given, died. I'm sorry, at least ye shall die. So God had given them laws and commandments. Right. And now they're talking to some type of being called the devil, the mm -hmm. serpent. And let's see on in verse 4 what happens. Let's see what this serpent says. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. Went right against God's law. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you something. I don't care what God tells you. I'm telling you, you're not going to die. Mm -hmm. He just went and pushed God's law aside. Put Sorry. the commandments of God aside. And set, he's going to set up his own law. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> and that's exactly what we're living in. We're living in a world today where they have set the laws of God aside and men are setting up their own laws and making it look good. Right. This is answer the question. Go ahead. Yes. Watch how she goes on in five. What's happening? The devil says. For oh, God mm -hmm. doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, mm -hmm. then your eyes shall be opened, mm -hmm. and ye shall be as gods, See that? knowing good and evil. Now go up against God. Try to become God. Take control. Make the decisions over life and death. Decide about cloning. Right. Decide about stem cells. Decide about brain tumors. You go ahead. Become God. Make artificial skin and artificial blood and artificial hearts. You ain't got to depend on God and God's law. Make your own laws and become your own gods. Go on over to another country and blow up everybody because they disagree with you. And just call it justification. That's what you can do because you could be God. Go blow up people and kill people and create drugs and cause turmoil in the world. That's okay. That's right. Because you can become a God. You can take life and give life. Read on. Number what we at number number what, six? Verse number six. Mm, go ahead, verse six. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, Bing, good for food, <laughs> and that it was pleasant to the eye, Bing, pleasant to the eye, beautiful, <laughs> and a tree to be desired to make one wish, to make one wise, wise. to make one wise. Mm -hmm. See that? Mm -hmm. She the, took. A no, I'm not finished. That's answer to your question. That's how the devil gets us. Mm -hmm. He makes evil fair sin. It sure looks like a whole lot of fun to go out to a party with all the flowing hair and the short skirts and all the handsome men and the pretty women and just dance the night away. Right. Boy, let's just go down to South Beach, Florida and just let go. Right. And just let, let's let all the, all the heathenism in us out. Mm. <laughs> That's yeah. fun. Right. Let's just get up on a mountain, way up on the top of a cliff with some wooden sticks on our feet on some ice and just zoom <laughs> down and call it skiing. Boy, is that fun. We can break our ankle or two. Right, right, Nobody right. tells us when we get 50 or 60 it's going to come back to haunt us. Mm -hmm. Boy, let's get up on a bridge and hold a rope a rubber and let's just jump off. Whee! And challenge very life and levity and gravity and boing and bungee jump. Bungee jump. Boy, that's fun. Right, right, right. <laughs> Let's just take some paper or some cloth and put it together with some plastic and run off a cliff. Wee and skydive and pretend we're birds for a little while. Right. Boy, well, that's really fun. Right. Let's try a little angel dust, a little crack. You know the funniest people in the world to me are people that put drug users away who drink coffee and smoke cigarettes right before it. <laughs> I find that so funny. That's interesting. They're just standing in court. They're downstairs before they put a past judgment on somebody and all the lawyers and judges are sitting around drinking caffeine and smoking nicotine and then come up and say, uh, Mr. So-and-so, we're sending you away for smoking marijuana or for using some type of drug. Boy, isn't that fun? That's what they're talking about here. The devil has made evil fair seeming. He makes the, the devilishment in the world more exciting. It just sounds so much. It sounds so much easier 
to let loose and do anything I want. Mm. You follow? And not follow the commandments of God. It's so much easier. That's, what you, that's the answer to your question. Right there, it's in Genesis chapter 3. You want to go on if you want, you can. I've been through this quote so many times in this series, but you can go through it again if you want. We was down to verse what? Six. We, because we hadn't finished six, right? Go ahead. She, Pleasant she, to the eye. Go ahead. She took of the fruit thereof and did, and eat. did eat mm -hmm. and gave also unto her husband with her. Come on with me. Let's all go down to South Park and get drunk. <laughs> that's right. Let's all go have a good time. You know, that's what people do, you know. People, don't, people can't go to a party by themselves. Right. They got to be other people in the party. Right. Come on, let's go have some fun. Yeah. Come on, you're such a bore. Come on, drink this beer. Smoke this cigarette. Try this marijuana. Oh, come on. One time ain't going to hurt you. That's what they're telling you right there in the Bible. It started that far back. And, I, and then this is the same man, that same devil. And you keep the problem is, they got you thinking he's one person. He's a leader. Revelations 12 tells you he's a leader of a host of beings. Right. That are walking the earth with me and you every day. Opening the clubs so my son and your son can get shot in them. Yeah. And then they're the police to take their time to get there. So That's they can right. believe the death. That's right. You know what I'm saying? They didn't cite the stuff. They're the ones who put the stuff on television and teach them how to do it. That's mm -hmm. right. And then when the kids go out and do what they learn on television, they bring the, create their own law and put them away. My question is, as, as man grows and he embraced the devil and his evilness, pushing him therefore further away from Godship or, or God's law. Or God's law. Which is the, which is the Bible. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Is there a way for him to get back once he realizes it? Yes. Yes. Turn to the Bible. Accept the law. If you're a Christian, accept Christ. If you're a Jew, accept Moses. If you're a Mohammedan, accept Mohammed. And get back to the law of God. And get away from men and their laws. And if enough of us do that, we will rule over the laws of Satan. You follow what I'm trying to say? There will be no need for the system that they set up that imprisons us in Satan's laws so we can't practice the Bible. They give us the Bible, but we better not practice it. Mm -hmm. not, not, not to the letter. Right, right. You know what I'm trying to say? The only way is to put all that down and pick up your cross and follow him. Right. And guess what? Jesus was persecuted because he did not follow the law of his day. Mm -hmm. So why are Christians not being persecuted? Hmm. But we Nuwapians are being persecuted because right. we're trying to follow the law of the Bible. Mm -hmm. Blessed is he who is persecuted after the righteous name's sake. For great is his reward in heaven. Mm -hmm. So persecuted they the prophets which was before you. Mm -hmm. You follow what I'm saying? Yes. 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 That's the deal. Mm -hmm. The deal is if you decide to pick up your cross and follow the law, right. the law of Moses and the, great, the grace and truth of Jesus Christ, you are going to be persecuted. Mm -hmm. They are going to persecute you. They're going to reveal, revile thee, say all manners of evil against you, false. They're going to slander you. They're going to drag you to court. They're going to call you a cult. They're going to have all kinds of. They're going to have many people. Going, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Satan got a host of people to cheer him on. Mm -hmm. A bunch of black devils. A bunch of white devils. Yeah. Young and old. Infiltrate your organization. Live with you. Love with you. Eat with you. Dine with you. Party with you and they're the children of the devil. They could have come through your own seed. Mm -hmm. The devil gets inside people and takes control. That's why Jesus said he had to cast out legions of devils from people. So the devil ain't just born as a devil. They also possess people. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm trying to say? Ain't that frightening? Yes. Yes. And they're with us every day. Our own children get possessed. All they got to do is get touched by the wings of Satan. Next you know they walk around wanting to be hip hoppers with their pants down, four or five carving eyebrow parts in their eyes and uh, earrings through their forehead and through their nipples and all right. kind of stupid stuff and listen to stuff that don't make sense and calling them music and mm. and then that's the devil's institution. Mm. But so is the shirt and the tie and the tight fitting suit, mm. the prep suit and the glasses. And the prep little boy, because that prep little boy and the prep little girl is going to advocate the devil's law. Mm. The little boy who's a hip hopper has broke the system and went into another form of devilishment. Right. But the worst is the one who thinks he's following the system and he's going to enforce the devil's law. 
Then there's another child who goes to the Bible or the Quran or whatever book and he makes himself a religious person. And he reads the law of God religiously, not belongs to a religion that brainwashes you. Religion can be used like obsession too. He is obsessed with the laws of God. And with that, he can break the spell of Satan. Mm. It's like Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. Right. The, Romans did, the Romans persecuted Jesus, not just the devil. The devil came out, but so were the Romans all tempting him and chasing him and trying to kill him. And his own black folks, the so-called Nazarites, stoned him. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You're going to get all of that. But if you have a church out there and a preacher that everybody loves and everybody's cheering him on and he got his own television program and everything's looking all so sweet. No persecution, no sheriffs coming after him, no slander, no, you know, no. And you, that man is not doing the right thing. Because they tell you right in the Bible, you're going to be, you're going to be persecuted. As the writer says, what is that? Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Okay. There's another one that says, blessed is he when man shall revile thee and say all manners of evil against you falsely. That's number 11. Read that. Blessed are ye when man shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my name. Mm -hmm. You hear that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's the plight of a new Nawapian. Nawapian is not a race. I'm saying Nawapian is not a person. Nawapian is a race. All people of all colors belong to Nawapians. And we're on a mission. Okay. Our mission is to live by the law of God. You can continue to live by the law and the traditions of man. You can ignore the Bible and the scriptures. You can have some old idiot preacher stamp there and make you think he's American. And, I mean, and talk American this and American that or wherever he, whatever country he's in. And he is pulling you away from the law of God. There ain't no such thing as American the law of God. Show me America in the Bible. Show me one place where it's at in the Bible. You can't find it in there. It don't exist in the Bible. It don't, the place don't exist. Now where the heck are you? Better do some research and find out where you are and what laws will govern the land you're in. The Native Americans that were here and how they lived. Because people came over here and set up man's law and shoved God's laws aside. That's right. All I got to say to that is amen. Amen. amen.